Um, really good to be here and very interesting to hear all the all the lectures this morning and I think especially the the, the width of the, uh, the, the the angle of people uh, discussing it but also where they're coming from we are based in Delft in this nice uh, old uh, facility um, and we are coping with the Dutch building industry and the Dutch building industry is not going in the right direction we think and probably quite similar to a lot of other European countries because it's too heavy it's uh, very inflexible and it's not using the materials or the daylight for that matter uh, very wisely so we say you should learn actually from from nature if you look we want to make buildings like nature makes its animals makes its trees so the skeleton the way it looks the way it moves it's all very much integrated and it's very efficient uh, at the same time so we say we should make buildings all of us uh, who have a high intelligence per kilogram use less materials and whatever material you use make sure it fulfills different functions so you don't need to add extra and on top of that, and this has been discussed many times already, uh, you can should make buildings which give people energy. So bring in daylight. Um, people have evolved in thousands of years outside with the rhythm of day and night without any artificial light. And we need the light, as everybody knows who knows anything about daylight and uh, 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 Caucasian rhythms. Um, and this is some pictures I made during some holidays uh, at the same spot actually almost uh, in Flores, Indonesia and the one is in the morning very early and the other one is in the afternoon and you can see the enormous spectrum and the width of daylight uh, and how and it, it's very important to bring that into your buildings instead of having this monotonous artificial lighting. <laughs> We have that kind of lighting in our building, and our building is from 1907, uh, which means that uh, there wasn't much artificial light yet, so uh, everything was done by daylight, uh, and it works very well. It's a very nice place to work. It's, it's a pity that in the picture some lights are on, but actually most of the time we don't have any artificial lights on during the day. But somewhere it went wrong. In 1907, we had these nice daylight filled spaces. We learned how to work with daylight to make good workspaces. But in the, in the, in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, especially in the US, but also in other places, um, artificial lights and HVAC was introduced. So we got these big slate uh, office plates. Uh, you don't need any place near the window anymore. And these are very, very terrible spaces to work in. Low, dark, bad indoor uh, climate. Um, and many of these buildings are now called sick buildings. So we should work differently and go back to what we have learned in the past. Uh, and ha happily, in uh, many of uh, the Dutch regulations, there are requirements for daylight in buildings. Uh, so educational buildings, we introduced from the committee I worked on, uh, a, a requirement for having fresh schools, fresh indoor climates in schools to educate the new generation. And daylight is one of the key factors in that. In dwellings, we have regulations about daylight and also in offices. It's not much what is uh, asked for by law. It could be more, it should be more, but still there's something. However, there are many buildings which are used for by people, for people, which don't have any daylight requirements at all. And my discussion is about a case for unrequested daylight. I think we, as architects, as designers, should introduce daylight into these projects. We should convince our clients that daylight is very important. And this is a small factory we made in the, in, in the Netherlands. And this, these people are working on the metal uh, uh, element, but they can just slide open the door. There's green on the outside and there's lots of daylight in this workspace. So industrial buildings need daylight as well. There are people working there, bring it in. Research buildings, laboratories are called industrial buildings in Holland. They also have no real uh, requirement for daylight. Same goes for infrastructural projects. So this is for the French company Danone. We made this uh, research building in Utrecht. And uh, we have uh, second-hand daylight, but still lots of daylight in the heart of the building. And it's very different from where they came from, which was very closed off and dark. And there are different ways to bring in this daylight. So this was a sick building. This used to be a sick building. But it was a concrete slab from the 70s, and we added an extra skin of open textile mesh. And it was fixed alongside, along the, the old balconies of the building. And this mesh was open enough to look through. It's black to have the maximum contrast with the outside, but it blocks the wind and it blocks the sun. And it made it possible for us for, uh, to have the glass all the way up to the floor. And the top part of this picture, the window, is, uh, is made of this open woven mesh. 
glass fiber, and the lower part is transparent glass. And you can see you see almost no difference. However, the top part is blocking the sun, but still bringing in fresh air so you can open a window even at 80 meters height. These skins, this is a, this textile cloth is always there. It's more interesting if you can make adaptable skins, like we adapt our clothing. And I would actually, with the heat here, take off my shirt normally, because it's quite hot. But if you have a roof light here, which is ETFE cushions, we have two prints, which is a positive and a negative print. You see them on the side. And when you blow up one of the, the, the chambers, the air chambers between these foils, you can open the, the grid up and daylight filters through like in a, in a forest. Well, if you uh, inflate, deflate the chamber, it gets closed and it blocks the daylight. So it's a skin which can adapt to uh, the atmosphere. And from the Dutch greenhouse industries, there are actually quite interesting products to be used. The left is a picture of a typical greenhouse in Holland, and there, the screens, as you can see on the top, are uh, 300 meter long screens, which can close up in, at once and are very efficient and very reliable. And we introduce those in, into our buildings, uh, venting the, the gap between the, the, the screens and the, and the glass. So you can make adaptable skins, which act to the amount of daylight and the amount of heat needed. Now we will now show two, pro two short projects, um, which are a facility building like this one, where we learned from old techniques like simple shed structures in the building, uh, and, and learned from uh, how to bring daylight on, in, a, in a good manner into these buildings itself. And of course, it's important to have balanced daylight. So the, the central part of this facility, it's research uh, laboratories and offices, they have to collaborate. And we introduced this sloping uh, floor in the center of the building, connecting all the floors with daylight from above, northern oriented, so we don't have uh, overheating. And this is where people mingle and work together, and, and it works for these very highly educated people to work there. But you can see also that the bays on both sides are quite slim. It's a narrow bay of about eight to 10 meters, and you can still look through. So when you're working in the laboratory, you have daylight from two sides. So there's no glare issue. It's a very comfortable space. And you have always contact with the green on the outside of the building. And this roof, this, this slope in the center of the building goes out to the outside. So you can even go to the outside in the heart of the building. And still the daylight is very nice. And you can see that the sheds have, of course, PV panels on the south-oriented slope. Well, the north is open for daylight. And there's a canopy for the top floor where the, where the laboratories are. And this canopy is, orient, is, is deeper when there's a, a, a stronger sun orientation and it's slimmer when there's none. And that's part of the idea for can we make, this was the, this is one picture of a project where I said, well, can I make an, 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 a classroom for uh, chemistry where they have, always have daylight and they don't need any artificial light. So like a daylight autonomy. autonomy. And what he did is we also made the sheds in the center of the, on the top of the roof. So everywhere you have even daylight, but it didn't work out because they still have the artificial lights on. So it was a good idea. It was nice to try, but it didn't really work here. And like I said, research buildings, they don't have any requirements for daylight, but also infrastructural buildings don't have any. So a coach station or a bus station is often a very nasty place to be in. It's dark, it's a very infrastructural space place. And we were asked to design a coach station near the, the railway station of Tilburg, a city in the south of Holland. And we tried to make a sort of kit of parts approach, a, a, a sort of method of making a building where the canopy is made of one single ETFE foil, bringing in daylight in the heart of the building. And it's a self-sufficient uh, station, uh, um, the bus station. So there are PV panels on top of it, and these PV, PV panels are used to light the whole bus station, but also to charge the electric buses. In the heart, we made these big canopies in the heart, we created this garden. So instead of waiting in this infrastructural area, you're actually waiting next to a garden, sitting on the, the edge of it. And you can see that in the, the smaller parts, the ETFE is, uh, there is an added PV panel zone, bringing in the energy of the building itself. And it's a really nice atmosphere if you're uh, waiting there. And this is the kit of parts, it has benches which are heated in the winter. Uh, so when you're sitting there, uh, and it's heated by the energy which is provided by the canopy itself. And of course we designed every part of it, really like a, more, more like industrial design than really a building design. And at night we use the, the energy to uh, light up the roof, so it's also a, a light fixture actually uh, for the city, instead of having big masts all around it. So it's a very minimum amount of materials. It's very lightweight and it uses daylight to the maximum in a spot where usually nobody uses daylight. 
So these are just a few examples where we as architects introduce daylight in a, in a, in a non-required space. There was no daylight requirement here. There was none at all these laboratories, except for the offices. And we as architects have the obligation to convince our clients uh, why uh, daylight is important in the buildings. Thank you.